Good day. Welcome to Love KC Live. Tonight, I have Linda Myers with me. Thank you so much, Linda, uh, for being a part of this call. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. So um, at Love KC, uh, we love to have this time of prayer where we gather, we tell stories of what God is doing. Uh, we get an opportunity to pray and also acknowledge that without God, uh, whatever we do, um, it cannot move forward without his presence in our city, without his presence in our community and in our families, um, life would not be the same. And we want to acknowledge that today. And um, I love Casey. Our vision is um, to create and to invite people uh, into what God is already doing in the city and to adapt a lifestyle. We call it a pray, care, share disciple lifestyle. And I'm so glad that Linda is here with us today. Um, this uh, live is going to be very different um, because um, we are going to be talking about Rosh Hashanah. And uh, it is incredible because um, this, um, this Jewish holiday, uh, it's a Jewish holiday, and um, I've asked Linda to come and share. But before she tells us um, anything about Rosh Hashanah, I want to give Linda an opportunity to just tell us about herself, and I'll tell you how I met Linda and who she is. I think, let me start with that, Linda, if you don't mind. <laughs> so my first encounter with Linda was um, part of a prayer team, and um, over time, I realized that this woman um, is a completely passionate about prayer and especially just communion with God and listening uh, to what God is saying. And I love that because my life has been built around um, the verse that says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So when I see someone who has that lifestyle, I'm drawn um, to that person. And that was how I got drawn to who Linda is. Uh, in the spirit, she is completely given to the Lord, completely given to communion uh, with the Lord and the practice and the culture of prayer. Uh, I, 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 you know, I dare say when I grow up, I want to be like Linda, where, you know, I spend <laughs> most of my time um, uh, seeking God and just listening for his voice and communicating what God is saying to uh, people around me. So Linda, I want to give you an opportunity to share who you are, what you've been up to and what God has been doing in your life. Well, where do you want me to start? <laughs> um, well, I didn't know the Lord till I was 28 years old. Wow. I believed there was a God, but I went to church where it doesn't mean anything was wrong with the church. I did not hear. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, by the time I was 28 years old, I had two little boys and I was real concerned about them. And I was given a book by Billy Graham called, called Peace with God. And I read that book, and by the time I got to the middle of it, I was on my knees in the bedroom asking the Lord into my life. And so that's that's how that happened. And I suppose, you know, you grow, and I, I had some wonderful helpers that told me you need to read the Word, which so many people, you know, come to the Lord, and they're not really um, disciple to learn to really take in and read the Word because it's a lie. The word is alive. It's real. There's no other book that the word is alive. So I started reading scripture and I, I cannot tell you exactly how it happened. I would listen to other people, you know, listen to um, Charles Stanley and people on the radio. I'm an old person. So we didn't have all the phones and all the internet and all that. And and I just so learned to read the word. And I learned the other most important thing to do was communicate with God. One of the first verses that I was taken to was John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that you would know him, the only true God. And so I kept crying out to know him. And I found that I got closer and closer the more I prayed. And that just led into a real, real life of prayer. I just think that that is my call. You know, the closer you get to God, you just learn what your call is. There's so many different calls. It's amazing. But I could stay in the closet from morning till night. My husband's thankful I don't, but I could. 
<laughs> and it just, it's where whatever you're called to do, praying for other people, praying for ministries, praying for pastors, praying for the city, that's just been a passion in me. It's, it's, that's the only word I really have. It's a passion in me. I know that God has a call on Kansas City, and I know that we're going to walk into it. And I can't make anyone else believe that, but through the prayer, I just know that. And so that's, that's where I like to stay, is in the closet. That's pretty awesome. I'm really inspired just listening to you talking about, you know, God's vision for the city and God's passion for the city and your passion and your love in following God, um, which is um, quite inspiring. So thank you so much. Uh, for sharing that aspect of your life. Um, I know today um, the focus is on Rosh Hashanah and um, it's already um, the fourth day. I might be counting wrong, but could you no. tell us? Um, okay, I'm, I got it right. So tell us, uh, Linda, what is Rosh Hashanah? Well, Rosh Hashanah and um, the 10 days of awe and Yom Kippur all go together. There are seven appointed times of God. I know you named them Jewish holidays, and most people think that, but these are not. They are appointed times of God. Now, the Jews follow them, but a lot of Jews are believers now in Jesus, and so they follow them a little differently, knowing that they're already saved, that Jesus has already been here, whereas um, other Jews that haven't accepted Jesus know the Messiah is coming, but they believe he's not here yet. But if you read Leviticus 23, God says these are appointed holidays. Um, excuse me, I should say high holy days. These are appointed times of God. And he said they go on, I think the word in there, I'd have to, I'm sorry, I don't have Leviticus right in front of me, but I think the word in there is these holidays are perpetually going on. They are forever. Ah, uh, there it is. They are a statute forever. It doesn't say between the Old Testament and New Testament that it's gone. No, it's, as a Christian, these are a fulfillment. These wonderful appointed times are a fulfillment of God. You know, I had a man from Jerusalem. He was an American, but he was teaching over there. Um, and he said, you need to take that page between the Old and New Testament and tear it out. This is the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and it's the Old Testament is for today as well as the New Testament because Jesus is all through the Old Testament. So good. God said he is the word. So he was with God in the beginning. And so the whole entire Bible goes together. And the Old Testament, they prophesied about the New Testament. And in the New Testament, they take you back to the prophecies in the Old Testament. It is all one big story. And I think if we could get that in our hearts, we would see it so much more clearly. That's wonderful. So Thank Rosh Hashanah, you. I'm sorry, were you, are you? Oh, no, no, go ahead. Well, Rosh Hashanah is, there's four festivals, try and make this short here. There's four festivals in the spring. Those have already been fulfilled by Jesus. Passover and unleavened bread. He was our Passover lamb and he went to the cross. And then 50 days later, his first fruits, that's Pentecost when he rose from the dead. And then 10 days after that um, is when he went back into heaven and he sent our wonderful Holy Spirit. And the day of Pentecost, of course, um, everyone came alive in the spirit as the Holy Spirit got, was in us. So Jesus fulfilled those spring um, appointed times of God, but the fall has not been fulfilled yet. And that's what I'm getting ready to tell you about is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and five days after Yom Kippur is Tabernacles. And those are the three. And Rosh Hashanah starts, um, it started on Sunday night, all of the Jewish um, the ways the Jews do things, I'll put it that way, are in the evening because God said that in Genesis. I wish we all did that too because he said it was evening the first day and then morning. So all of these appointed times of God 
start in the evening. So Sunday evening, um, we got together and Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year. Um, it's not really the new year. It's just the head of the year where all the crops are, they've come in, everything has, and they're, you know, giving it to God and thanking him for the crops and the rain that's going to be coming. And they uh, celebrate that and they have their family over for dinner and everything, but it's a solemn, uh, lovely and smiling and happy time, but solemn because they know that they're going in to mm -hmm. the 10 days of all. And the 10 days of all, again, remember, just keep in your minds that these are appointed of God and it's just as important in the Old Testament as the New. So I'm going to tell you from a Christian perspective because mm -hmm. the Jewish perspective, they, they don't think Jesus has been here yet. And they want to be sure and follow to the T what they're doing because they want their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Our names are already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. So from our point of view, this is such a special time. Um, it's an open heaven time where God is listening to the repentant prayers. And I had uh, Judy Rowe that prays with me a lot. I just loved what she saw in the spirit. God showed her, remember, is this even written that way in scripture? There was an open heaven when the transfiguration took place and those three disciples saw mm -hmm. Jesus in clothes whiter than you've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And when they were there, it was called an open heaven and they could see in the spirit. That's to me what it means. And so God now for 10 days after the um, head of the year, mm -hmm. we have the 10 days of awe. And what those are, they're, they're just so special. It's a time to get close to God, a time to reflect. Have I hurt someone? Do I need to forgive someone? Have I taken offense against someone? Have I not treated someone like I should have? Did I lie? You could go down the list. And I, you know, I could give you a lot of scriptures, but you probably know them all about, you know, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And, well, this is that 10 days of open heaven that, of course, we can repent all year, but this is a special God appointed time that you can spend 10 days. And I love this cycle. I always make a circle. You start praising God and you praise him and you praise him and you worship him. And all of a sudden, you're hearing something like, oh, yeah, I wasn't nice to Karen yesterday. I need to go apologize. So you repent for that. And then you're so happy he forgave you. And you're so excited to tell her you're sorry. You get back into praise again. And you're praising more and more. And God said, ah, you know, you have an anger issue. You need to get rid of this. Oh, Lord, I just repent. Please help me with my anger issue. And you go to scripture and find out what he says about anger and you repent of that. And you are so excited that he forgave you that you get back into praise. And it's just a circle that keeps going. And I oh, wish I had words. It's just such a special time because every time you repent, which is a gift, repentance is a lovely, lovely gift of the Lord. It is straight from him and he gave you that gift of repentance so you could get close to him and closer and closer and come be in the holy place all the time god says be holy as i am holy yeah. he wants that and that closeness with him comes more and more the more you spend time with him praising him and letting take you those places he has to for repentance we are having those 10 days of all prayer meetings right now. It's a time between you and God. This isn't a time for the big church. It's a time for the big church individually. It's between you and God. They don't have great big, huge meetings and go to synagogues. and all. No, this is a one-on-one. -on -one. God, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? Because I want to get so close to you. And it's so special. And we, we pray alone. Even when we get together, we pray alone and ask those kind of questions. And then at the end, we come back for just a little bit of corporate prayer and repent together. Maybe like this morning, we repent for the church because we're not in unity like we 
we really like to be. We know that God wants us to love one another better than ourselves. Yeah. And so we prayed for that as a whole. But for, for the most part of it, we were alone with God and asking him what we needed to do. And at the end of these 10 days, next Wednesday night in the evening, as it closes, because the holiday will close in the evening, mm -hmm. we will celebrate the fact that we have repented and will keep on repenting. And there was an open heaven, so we just are expecting a special closeness to God because he called this holiday. Mm -hmm. And five days after this, God is just so amazing. You know, Jesus hasn't come back yet, but we'll celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is a picture of Jesus coming back and going with us all into the temple of holiness, probably not a building at all, just this temple where we all come together yeah. and then praise God for eight straight days. They don't split. They now, don't Linda, let, let me ask you a very quick question. Um, I love what you have already expounded so beautifully um, about Rosh Hashanah and the head of the year and how these, it's not just a holiday, but it's an appointed time. Yes. An appointed time that God has instituted mm -hmm. from the book of Leviticus, but yet still applicable today because it's a perpetual, um, it's a perpetual uh, feast or one of the perpetual feasts that God has instituted. And um, you talked about the 10 days of repentance, and that is leading to Yom Kippur. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. That's what Yom Kippur is the last day. Of repentance, you want to be sure you have bowed down before him. He chastens those he loves, mm -hmm. and you want to be sure you've done everything. So that is the holiest of the days, knowing it's the last one. Now, why is that the holiest of the year? And um, when you think of uh, ecclesiology, when you think of Christendom, what event happened in that in that time? Well. For them, it's the holiest because they believe that their names will stay written in the book of life if they have done what they should. For us as Christians, it's to me, I'll tell you just personally, for me, yeah. it's just knowing that I have bowed down before God that very last day, Yom Kippur, they uh, fast 24 hours. And in that fasting, you know, fasting makes you feel a little weak. And you get humble, very humble. And it's the most humbling day of the year, knowing that God chose it to grow you up for his glory and to cause you to be into him even more. So to me, it's the, like the climax, you know, working up to, I don't know, Christmas, working up to your birthday, working up to, you are so excited that you have prayed and prayed and I shouldn't even use the word working because God's the one that does the working. But you have prayed and you've sought him with all your heart. So you know, you know that he's listened to every prayer you put before him and you know you're closer to him. And it's yeah. just a solemn time. It's just a yeah, solemn wonderful. time. So it means that um, the uh, Yom Kippur uh, for the Jew is they, they want their name to still be written in the um in the book of life while for believers our names are already been written in the lamb's book of life because we have received we've accepted the sacrifice of jesus christ we've accepted it as sufficient we've accepted it as complete there's nothing that needs to be done he's offered once and for all just like hebrew says his blood and um so on that on that feast am i am i interpreting it correctly you are for the Jews, for and for us, yes, everything you said is correct. But for me, um, it's just a time when I'm so excited that I've given more to God. Amen. Lots of me, all of him. That's, that's where you want to be. Yes. That's what John the Baptist said. I must decrease, he must increase. To me as a Christian, what it does by the last day is yeah. I've been so fully into him and wanting him and repenting and praising him. I feel like there's less of me and more of him because it was his appointed time that he called. So he did that work in me. 
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I don't know how this ties into the um, the ten virgins because I'm thinking about those um, those virgins that had um, their lamp. Some of them, um, I think, half of them had extra oil, and there is this um, you know waiting for the bridegroom coming and. The ones with extra oil, they were the ones that were able to uh, meet and welcome um, the, the bridegroom. So for me, uh, on a personal note, so I feel like this season seems like that. This God is always wooing and calling us uh, for communion with him because he's a father. A father is like that. You want to be around your kids. And, and, I, and, and, and I have this sense of God wanting communion with his children, wanting communion Amongst his children as well, which you spoke um, on the subject of uh, of unity, which Jesus has prayed in John 17. He said that they might be one, Father, as you and I are one. Um, any last thoughts you want to share about um, this um, feast to our viewers um, for them to um to hold it on to, um, you know, hold it on to their heart. Um, if I'm walking in obedience with uh, to God's word. I want to be hearing what he's saying, and I want to act accordingly. Well, I can just tell you again from my own perspective, every day that you spend with God and in his word, you get closer. That's scriptural. That's happening. Mm -hmm. But when you know that you have um, walked through his appointed feast just because you're out of obedience, because you love him so much, yeah. I just feel like this is a special time where things fall off quicker. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. And uh, I just feel like since I'm being obedient and keeping a special time to him, that it's just magnified. That's, there's, you know, you can repent anytime. You can, I hope you all praise every single day. Yeah. Um, but for me, keeping this is just so special because he called it. Since he called it, I may not understand all of what he said, but he called it so I just have great, greater even joy in mm -hmm. keeping this time. This is wonderful. It's wonderful. If I hear anything you're saying, it's going to be anything we're doing is going to be magnified during this time um, because of what the feast um, is and the significance of it. Well, Linda, before I let you go, is, um, uh, is there any burden... Um, that God has placed in your heart, I would love for you to pray. And I'd love for you to, um, to pray, um, number one, for the, for the church in the city and, um, you know, and specifically for any, any particular burden that God has allowed you to carry, uh, if you could, you know, on, on this call to, um, to just release it and pray. The burden I have is for the church. That's how I'll pray. All right. Let's go. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for the Big C Church in Kansas City. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that you love your church. That's why you said you would come to judge your first, your church first. Mm. And you do that because of your great love for us. The judgments are to help us to fall down on our faces and go deep into you, not to hurt us. Mm. Lord, even though those times may be trials and not seem like fun times, they're for the very purpose of us rising up as the real church of God. I thank you, Lord, that you forgive us that we have not loved one another like we should. I thank you, Lord, that you'd forgive us because we've had so many traditions of men instead of following just you. But I thank you, God, that you are straightening us out. That's what you're coming to do. That's what your word says. You love us so much, you won't let us go on this way. You want us to be a holy people for your glory so that we can be used, yes. especially in these last days. So I thank you, God, that you are moving on the church in Kansas City. You're moving on every pastor in the greatest love ever. You are love. You're moving on every church, calling and wooing the people to come close to you. Because this is what eternal life is, is knowing you, God, just knowing you. I cry out for all of the city, all of Kansas City area, all the cities involved, mm -hmm. that we will bow our knee to the Lord, the King of glory, mm -hmm. who is coming to judge us in total love mm -hmm. and help us grow closer to him. And I thank you, Lord. We'll drop off everything that's not from you. 
And everything that is from you will cling on to and hold on to. And I thank you, God, we will treat you as holy because you are holy. Thank you, Lord, that you are making us holy too. In Amen. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Linda, thank you so much um, for um, pouring into us and our viewers. And um, hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.